<laughs> All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Worship Outside on the Farm, Wendell United Methodist Church. We're grateful that you chose to worship with us today. We're grateful to lead you in worship. Uh, my name is Wallace. I serve as a pastor here at Wendell Methodist every Sunday, and especially today on Graduation Sunday. Today we're celebrating uh, several of our graduates. I've seen four of them come in so far. We might have a couple other trickle in, I don't know. Uh, but after worship, we'll gather over them and pray over them and send them out into the world to make the world a better place, right? And <laughs> do their best at it. Uh, we're grateful to worship with you today. As we gather and worship, a couple of announcements to remember. Uh, we are doing a Back at Children's, uh, we're calling it Bible Club. Uh, it's Wednesday evening from 6 to 7 for kids 3 to uh, 11. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. And last week we had a great turnout. It's a lot of fun. We're continuing with youth group. We're continuing with Sunday school. I don't know if any of y'all saw the news uh, this past week. I don't see any masks out here, which normally I would be really fussing at you. But today, hey, we're all right. So uh, we are. We have an administrative council meeting in a week and a half. Uh, and at that meeting, I'm going to propose that we go back to in-person worship for Sunday in uh, June in the sanctuary. So more to come on that. Uh, watch your calendars. We're looking forward to that. As we gather today, today, let us pray together as we welcome and become present to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we are gathered here in your presence. You have uh, moved and shaken and called us into this place to bring our worship to you. Uh, would you calm our hearts and still our racing minds and tune our spirits to what you would have to speak to us today? We bring our full selves to your presence. Uh, through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Church, your worship guide. You should have gotten one on your way in. If you didn't, wave your hand madly and I'll make sure you get one. Or you can download it from windowumc.org on your iPhone or phone and uh, follow along with the music. Uh, let's sing together. Uh, let's sing together. Proclaim God's praises.
Clap your hands, all you people, and shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the the Lord Lord Most Most High High is awesome, awesome, and a a great great king king over all all the earth. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. And one voice, let's profess our faith together. If this is true for you, might you find it on your lips today. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come before the Lord in prayer, we uh, offer together our communal prayers of petition and lament and hope together. Uh, And it's our tradition to pray for one another, uh, even in this space outside. Uh, So uh, I'll start, and I wonder if there are ways that we can pray for one another uh, even today. I want to pray for Justin Eaton, who had uh, pretty significant surgery a few weeks ago and wound up back in the ER last night, late overnight. Looks like he might have another surgery. I'd appreciate prayers for our family. Ashley's grandmother passed last night after a uh, a, a long and hard uh, battle with some cancer, uh, and so our family is down there, and I'm running down there uh, after worship today to be with family. Uh, at risk of embarrassment, everybody look over here. Uh, Tim Wimple, whom we have been praying for for weeks and weeks, is out of the hospital and home and doing wonder. He's actually over here, but you'll feel awkward <laughs> if everybody looks out. So we're glad that Tim is here, uh, and we continue blessings for his family. Uh, how else can we pray uh, to, today? I mean, obviously, our graduates, we want to pray for what, anything else going on. you got to yell. I've got the generator over here. Elaine Ray, yes, we want to continue prayers for Elaine Ray, who uh, had surgery a couple weeks ago to remove a cancerous tumor in her brain, and she'll begin uh, chemo and radiation at the end of this month um, for that. And for Bob Privet, let's see, I saw him. He's sitting here under the shade. You got a front seat. Glad to have you uh, back with us. You've been here a couple weeks, but we're really glad to have you, Bob. Continue prayers for Bob, who is in good recovery. I've had 32-year-old Brian on our prayer list for um, spinal tumors, and he got rushed back to the hospital Friday night and is anticipating another really massive surgery right now. So, Pray for Brian, sure. Well, church, let's pray together. Holy and merciful God, today as we shrink before the mystery of your presence that sustains us, we offer all of our praise and our thanksgiving to you, a God who loves us more than we can possibly imagine, who gives us only good things, who blesses us uh, immeasurably. Uh, We thank you for wonderful things, things like birthdays and anniversaries, things especially on this graduation Sunday for the Oh my goodness, for the blood, the sweat, the tears that has brought these graduates to this place. Uh, For the parents, for the grandparents, for the teachers, God bless the patient teachers. Uh, For those who have all played a part in these students' lives, and for the students who are able to celebrate this today. We ask your uh, blessings of thanksgiving over them. We thank you for healing. I thank you for your gift of uh, gratitude in all places. We especially ask your blessings for those who are struggling today, whether in mind or body or spirit. Uh, Pray for those struggling with uh, physical issues, for those struggling with mental health issues, uh, for those struggling just in general. We pray for our world where we see uh, senseless violence or or just plain violence, uh, for where we see heartache and pain. Uh, We pray your presence uh, might be uh, palpable in those places. 
and through all things. We know, especially today on Ascension Sunday, that we play a part in all of this work. Tune our ears to hear what you might convict, call, coerce us into. This through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. A church we said is a call to worship to sing praises to the God, our God, and we're about to do that. It's a uh, sort of a jazzy song called "What a Friend." Uh, so I hope to see your mouths moving, your feet uh, uh, tapping, and your maybe your hands clapping. It's all right to get a little bit a uh, little bit Pentecostal out here. We are outside. Let's sing. Let's get rowdy. This is uh, what we call in the tradition of our church Ascension Sunday. It's this mysterious scripture where, liter where Jesus literally goes poof into the clouds. Uh, so as we prepare to hear the scripture read, let us pray our prayer for illumination in one voice. O Lord, oh Lord your, your word is a lamp, lamp to our feet, feet and, and a light to our, our path. path. Give, Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us. Through Jesus Christ, amen. 
Our scripture today comes from Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And I say, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he let them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Church, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Well, again, welcome to worship. We're glad that you chose to be here this morning. I know there are lots of other places you could be, at the beach, at the lake, in your bed, uh, but we're glad that you chose to worship with us today. We're in a sermon series here at Wendell Methodist uh, called Sing to the Lord a New Song. It's based on a psalm uh, from the Old Testament scriptures that invites us to look at the hymnody, to look at the significance, to look at the, like the theology behind singing. Uh, and so each week we're picking a different hymn of faith, sort of overlaying that on top of the lectionary series, uh, and just sort of seeing what bubbles up to the top. This week I'm looking forward to, uh, if you haven't noticed already, the theme. I'm not give it away. We'll get into that in a minute. So I have a, a vivid memory of I was in I was in high school standing outside my uh, my high school's gym. We were in gym class. Uh, everybody had taken a break. We ran outside to the water fountain to get a drink of water, and uh, a guy ran out of the gym, jumped in front of a dozen other people, sort of like pushed him out of the way, and got a drink of water and ran on. I remember thinking like vividly at that moment. It's like, dear Lord, I cannot wait until I graduate and everybody grows up and everybody just gets along and there's no more fighting, there's no more bullying, there's no more shit. Like, everybody just needs to grow up. I cannot wait until I graduate and everybody grows up. <laughs> and then this past week, like, we're watching television and uh, on the news station Nightdale shows up gas shortage everybody's losing their minds Nightdale shows up on the on the news a, a, a couple of people are getting to like a fist fight spits flying police show up over getting gas and again I, I went I, I went back to this place and I, like and even a friend told me this past week that they had a friend in uh, in Taiwan who saw Nightdale, that put that thing in Nightdale show up on the Taiwan news. Like and so my mind goes back to this place that I experienced when I was like a freshman in high school. It's like I get like when are people just going to grow up? Like like everybody I think needs to like you you know this feeling. You've all experienced this moment of looking out at some sort of situation and and say and say like these people just need to grow. Like we need to go back to high school and we need to go through this whole sort of getting ready for life thing again. And so on graduation Sunday, I got some good news. Like after graduation, people don't just grow up. People don't just grow up. You know, this past week, and you know, the the whole situation had a gas bomb, some mess, and you sort of roll your eyes like people need to grow up. But then it gets really very serious when you're looking at the news and we see this this conflict between Israel and Hamas, and and this uh, this uh, like over a holy land over a holy land. We, we see conflict all over the place. Just, just this past week, there was a the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, who is ironically a local pastor in the area, uh, spoke out against another Southern Baptist church who had ordained three women uh, into ministry. He spoke out saying, I am deeply disappointed and the role of pastor should be re re uh, 
should be held for men. And, and like we as Methodists, you, you univocally uh, uh, approve the ordination of women. So like over and over, like just this past week, I have this experience of like, when, like, when are people going to grow up? When is God going to come in and tap some people on their shoulder hard and say, oh, buddy, you got it wrong. This is the direction we're going. When we look and see all the pain, all the suffering, all the issues, all the struggles, all the mess, we, we wonder, we, like we look up to the sky and wonder like, Jesus, where are you? What are you doing? What is going on? And I think, I wonder if... This is exactly where the disciples found themselves on this moment in the story of Scripture. The disciples who had just lived through the horror, the, the tragedy, the, the terrifying nature of walking with Jesus through his execution. Through, through, his, through his teaching, through his upsetting the temple, through his arrest, through his beating, through his crucifixion. They had lived through the, the turmoil of burying him in the tomb, of experiencing the joy of Easter resurrection. And then Jesus walked with them. Jesus was physically present. You remember Thomas stuck his finger in his side like Jesus was there. Jesus was with them. And through those 40 days, Jesus was teaching them over and over and over, like pointing to the kingdom of God over and over, like reading the scripture over this series uh, following Jesus' uh, resurrection, over and over, Jesus is pointing to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here. The disciples are walking with Jesus. So the, uh, Luke says they're on their way to Bethany. They're on their way to Bethany, which is just a, a town outside of the main epicenter of what was going on. They went to Bethany often. Uh, they, went to, they were on their way to Bethany. Uh, and Jesus, uh, Acts tells us this, Jesus says he's getting ready to leave them. And the disciples say, wait a minute, what, what do you mean you're about to leave us? Yeah, you know, like, are you looking around? Do you see what's going on? Do you remember all that you were talking about? All that they anticipated? Do you remember our Easter series where we remember that, or our, our Lent series where we focus so much on the disciples, Peter especially, thought that Jesus was coming to lead this revolutionary political movement to overthrow the Romans, to overthrow the Jewish, uh, the Jewish people, to to bring fulfillment to this. The the disciples, from reading the scripture, it seems like, are still holding on to that idea. They're saying, Jesus, you come back. You have overcome death. You have uh, put it in the Romans' face, like. We're, we're poised now to do exactly what you were talking about. Like, why, why go now? Why go now? There's plenty left to do. And then, of course, later on they find out the disciples are wondering, like, when, when this actually happens, when we do go to Rome, can we, and we overthrow them, can we, can we still be there, like, right there? Can we be your cabinet and sort of take some, uh, take some credit for it? For, and uh, rather than responding in this uh, arousing speech, uh, Jesus has uh, this uh, statement that is really sort of anticlimactic. Jesus says these, these words in Luke. He says, I am sending you as witnesses. Uh, later on in Matthew, it says a little more exciting, says I'm sending you to go and make disciples for the transformation of the world. And then literally, Jesus like poops away into the clouds and, and leaves the disciples like standing there their mouths gaped open wondering like why jesus where are you going there's so much to do like open your eyes just look around there's injustice everywhere there's pain everywhere there are people sick everywhere like you're infinite you've been around forever you're going to be around forever like what what is a couple more months here on earth just to like finish what you came to start can't you finish what you started and jesus points them back and says no You'll be my witnesses. And today is Ascension, a, Ascension Sunday, like rising up. Ascension Sunday in the church. This is the Sunday that we stand in this tension, in this very uncomfortable position with the disciples, looking up into the clouds, wondering, like, where is Jesus going? Like, why isn't Jesus right here in the mess, in what is going on, like fixing it? Where is Jesus? 
I think Ascension Sunday uh, teaches us two things, and they're going to sound a little contradictory, but hold on, we're going to get into them a little bit. I think that Jesus teaches us in Ascension Sunday that, one, we are too dependent on Jesus. We're too dependent on Jesus. And then number two, we are not dependent enough on Jesus. So we're too dependent on Jesus and we're not dependent enough on Jesus. Now hold on, we're going to sort of pull it out. First, we're too dependent on, we're too dependent on Jesus. You know, like the, like the disciples, uh, we stand on this Ascension Sunday looking at Jesus, wanting Jesus to fix everything him, himself himself. The disciples at no point asked Jesus, like, what, what should I do to help with this? Or what should, like, where do we go? How do we help fix this? They pointed all their attention on Jesus and said, why are you going? What are you going to do to fix this? I, I think a lot of times in our spiritual lives, we fall into the same issue. You now we see something terrible on the news, or we have something even personally bad happen to us, and we, we pray. Well, yeah, it's right to pray, of course. We, we pray to God that in, in some miraculous way that God might heal things, that God might offer us new ideas, that Jesus, we pray, Jesus, would you just end racism? Jesus, would you end poverty? Jesus, would you end senseless killing? Jesus, would you end killing just in general? Jesus, give me a promotion. Jesus, give me a new house. Jesus, help my kid on her test. Jesus, help me with this sort of thing. And before long, we fall into this elementary idea of Jesus as God as a sort of like Santa Claus in the sky. If we ask him in the right way with the right words and do the right things, then we get what we want or feel like we need. I think too often, perhaps, we're too dependent on Jesus to do everything for us to the detriment of our willingness to participate in it. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons for this. I think uh, one problem is, uh, you know, like the problem seems too big to deal with, you know, like end world hunger. Like, all right, what, what am I going to... What am I going to do about that? It's, the problem is too big to deal with. Uh, and so what do we do? What do we do? We, like, we do the ostrich. We go and stick our hand, heads in the sand and just pretend like it is not happening. We go home to our, to our, our homes and we pull in the garage door and we put the garage door behind us, down behind us and we go inside and we have our own insular little community. If, it, if we stick our hands in the sand and pretend like it doesn't happen, like it's just over there, then we can detach ourselves from the need of doing it. Maybe it feels like too big of a problem. Maybe we just don't want to do it. Maybe we don't have any sort of interest in it. And there are always going to be bullies who jump in front of you at the water fountain. There are always going to be bullies who try and take your gas. There are always going to be bullies who come in and do something and take advantage of you. There are always going to be bullies who come in and take your seat in church, even after we've been out for so long. There are always going to be struggles. There are always going to be issues. And, and so why we look to the sky and say, why doesn't like, Jesus do something about this? With the disciples, we ask. I don't know. I wonder if Perhaps we're too dependent on Jesus to do everything for us. But then in the same vein, I wonder if we're not dependent enough on Jesus to do things for us. Uh, reading this scripture, Jesus says in the same sentence, You will go be witnesses to, uh, of my work and all the earth, and I will give you power. Over this. this is foreshadowing of what will come next week on this Pentecost event where the Holy Spirit descends on the disciples who gives them power to do things that are unimaginable to them, things that they could not possibly have imagined to do on their own. Like my, my favorite verse comes from Ephesians. It's the Ephesians uh, benediction from Paul. It says, blessings to you who, through Jesus Christ who gives you the power to do immeasurably more than you can even ask or imagine. This power that descends on us even as Jesus leaves into the poof of clouds. The power that descends upon us is this power of Jesus into our that we receive when we ask Jesus into our hearts that gives us the ability, the desire, the hope of changing this sick world. So we're, de we're too dependent on Jesus to do it, but we're not dependent enough on Jesus to give us the power to do it. 
Uh, Liam, Liam, my little boy, he's four and a half now. He has always uh, struggled a little bit to like maintain focus. If you've ever had a little boy, you probably, like Lily's totally different. You can go tell her, give her six steps, and she'll come back and do it. We have a constant battle in our house keeping the playroom clean. If you've been to the parsonage, our, the office is now not an office, it's a playroom full of toys. It's a wonderful place. Uh, and so frequently, it's a, just a disaster. So um, I, I'll go in and just lose it and say, we're cleaning the playroom. I go in here, I'll shut the door, you're not leaving until it's clean. And you can imagine what happens. Liam, though, really struggles with this. Like, literally, he does. And so what, what I do, as I say, I give him a very direct task. I say, Liam, I need you to go put all of your cars in the car box and then come back and tell me that you've done it. And then I'll tell him to do something else and he'll come back and do it. And usually he'll do that once and then I'll come back in 10 minutes and he's just like literally in the floor rolling around. And I get so frustrated that I say, this is not my moment of brightest parenting. This is not a suggestion. Like I literally say, Liam, it looks like you don't know how to do this. And I bend down and I grab his hands and I, I pick up the car and I walk him over and I put it in the bucket and said, this is how you do this. You can do it. And then I leave and he does it. And by no means is that a perfect or good or do I recommend it. But I think it's a really interesting image of the way that God gives us power to do the things that we feel like are impossible. Like you or I would walk in the playroom and say, this is a mess, let's clean it up, ten minutes later it's good. But to, to Liam, he walks in there and sees this and his mind literally blows up. I can not do this. Yeah, I think a lot of times we look out in the world and see whatever sort of mess it is and we think in our mind, I cannot do this. But we come back to the scripture. I said, Jesus says, you will be my witnesses. You will go and make disciples for all the nations for the transformation of the world. You will receive power to do this. My Holy Spirit will enter into you and you will be able to do this. When you feel like you cannot, I will literally come and grab your hands and show you what to do. We as people of faith, our Christian hope, our hope is that the world is not as it is should be, but the our work in the world through the power of Jesus Christ can transform the world. And so you know, on this graduation Sunday, uh, you walk and you receive your diploma, you get a, a, a kick out the door, you get a little more independence, you get your own ability to do whatever you want. So, and today, like graduates, I think perhaps everybody can hear this, but graduates. Uh, like when, when we lean on Jesus, Jesus is able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. And when we lean on Jesus, when we lean on the power of Jesus, we can literally transform the world. And because of Jesus, we have hope when we are lost, when we are frustrated, when we are angry, when we are happy, when we are excited, when we are stressed. Jesus, our friend, is always the one to be there to give us exactly what we need. And so today, we sing together on Ascension Sunday, on Graduation Sunday, what a friend we have in Jesus. As the band comes, we're literally going to sing it. This is going to be our sort of benediction, our send-off, our conclusion to this work today. That through Jesus, through this uh, friend we have, through this friend we have. You know, the scripture we read last week said, Jesus does not call us servants, which it would be an honor to serve Jesus. Jesus doesn't call us servants, but calls us friends. A friend closer than you can possibly imagine. That's there when you ask, that gives you energy for the journey, to sustain the journey, to give you a kick in the pants when you need it, to grab your hands and feet and show you what to do. This is the power of a friend like Jesus. And so I'll leave you with the uh, uh, scripture from the Ephesians. Uh, graduates, I hope you'll hear this, but I think maybe everybody could overhear it. Ephesians 1, 18, 19. I pray uh, 
Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. With the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope. Remember that word, hope. What is the hope to which he has called you? What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among all the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? That's amazing. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? According to the working of his great power for all of you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, might we now sing... What a friend we have in Jesus. A few of our graduates, they're not all here, but a few of them are. I'm going to invite uh, Kimmy Longfellow to come on. Uh, Kimmy is our one of our youth leaders, and she drew, drew the short straw, so she gets the microphone today. She's going to introduce a few of our graduates. I am so incredibly grateful for Kimmy and for Pam and for Dan, who lead our youth every week. 
They, you know, they have met even through the pandemic while it was dangerous. It was online when we were able to come back a little bit. They wore their masks and they were able to gather and they had really tirelessly worked with these students. And, and so I am so grateful for their work and here. And Kimmy's going to introduce, I'm going to wear my sunglasses so I don't cry. And we're going to, let's see. Can you go for me? Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for being here to support our seniors this morning. I talked with Pastor Wallace earlier. We had talked about what we were going to do and who was going to do what, and then I realized earlier this week we didn't talk about who was going to talk about the seniors. So I called him, and he's like, oh, can one of you youth leaders do it? That would be so awesome. How about you do it? (laughs) And you know that feeling when you're little and somebody important in your life asks you to do something and how you go? Oh, you puff up like a rooster and you feel real good about yourself until you start to do it. Yeah, Yeah, that was me. (laughs) And it was then that I think I realized that he handed me this opportunity because he didn't want you to see him cry. And it's okay because I did two things for you this morning. I put on my big girl clothes and I put on makeup so you're not going to see me cry. I'm getting through this without crying. So I want to share something with you. I wrote a few things so I wouldn't squirrel off. Although I can't remember to stop and pick up bread on my way home at the store, I can remember my high school and my college graduation like it was yesterday. I can tell you what I wore for my college graduation. That's years ago, like when dinosaurs roamed, if you ask Josephine. I'm the oldest of two children, and graduating meant that I was moving on to bigger and better things. I grew up in the holler, in the country, in the sticks, 30 miles from civilization. We coon hunted with my dad on Friday night, and we watched Hee Haw on Saturday night. That was the highlight of our week. So graduation meant I'm going to the city, to college. I'm going to be surrounded by malls, friends. Oh, I forgot we had antenna TV. I'm going to get cable TV. We're watching MTV. No more Hee Haw. And those people there don't know what coon hunting or he haul even is, it's not even talked about. I had it made. My mother to our seniors was just like yours. She was a super hot mess. Let me tell you why. Her baby was leaving the nest. Even though I'm the oldest, I was still her baby and you will always be your mama's baby, no matter what you do. I had to promise her that I would call home every single day and that I would come home on the weekends I also had to promise her that I wouldn't forget where I was raised. And I think if you asked her today, I'm almost 51 years old, and I think if you ask her today, she'd say she's proud. I've accomplished that. I called every day, and I still do. I went home every weekend, but probably wasn't because she told me to, and I promised. Who wants to do their own laundry? And we all know you're a broke college kid. You need money, right? So you went home for every weekend for a reason. We still go home every opportunity we get. West Virginia's a drive, but we make it every chance we get. And she would send home leftovers on Sunday to college with me because she knew I was a big eater and I wouldn't eat. I'm pretty confident I've mastered the eating at this point. So hands down, you're going to make promises to your mama. Please keep them because she's still going to cry even when you're gone. And seniors, let me share a secret with you that I learned 27 years ago. You know how you're always saying, I will not be my mother. I will not be my father. I promise you, you will be your mother and your father. You will be both of them at once, at some point in your life. And what I learned is it's okay to be your mom and your dad. It's okay to be your mom and your dad as long as you stay true to yourself, to your faith, and to your families. Make your own ways but be true to yourself. And parents, I haven't forgotten you. As you know, Wallace, you did this to me on purpose. My papers are stuck together. As a parent, we find ourselves helping with homework. And one thing I can promise you that I learned during the whole pandemic, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I'm not smarter than a high school senior, and I surely am not smarter than you college graduates. I found myself helping Josephine a couple weeks ago with the civics project. And that civics project had a question on it. 
But I learned two things from it before I tell you what that question was. One, I don't want to be an adult anymore. And two, I learned that we accept answers that are wrong. The question asks, what does it cost to raise a child? If I ask you what it costs to raise a child, what would you tell me? Give me a dollar figure. I about fell out my chair when I found the answer. What if I told you half a million dollars in 2020 to raise a child? $500,000. So I looked at that, I'm like, what are they basing it on? They based it on the cost of diapers food, shelter, clothing, medical bills. They based it on sports, sports equipment, hobbies, toys, education, everything you could tangibly put a dollar figure on. And that half a million dollar answer was the right answer for what the teacher wanted. So when Wallace asked me to talk, I'm like, what am I gonna talk about, right? What do I say to these seniors that's different than anyone else can say to them? What do I say to the parents that are watching their first ones graduate? or your last one graduate, or maybe one in the middle graduate. What I say to you is that the half a million dollars figure to raise a child is a wrong answer. That question didn't count in and cannot put a price tag on the unconditional love you've given those children over the years. It cannot put a price tag on the memories that you've made. The first bike ride, their first steps, their first home run, their first big fish. You can't put a price tag on those. So as you move forward, I want you to know today, graduation is not the end. Graduation is the beginning of a really exciting adventure. And today we're making memories. Graduation is a memory. And it's a memory that you're making together. Some of you are going off to college. Maybe you're thinking like I was, I'm out of Hickville and I'm moving on to bigger and better. You'll come back. Give it time, you'll come back, you'll miss it. You'll miss little old Wendell and the quietness because the city's not what it's cracked up to be. Maybe you're getting ready to graduate college or you just graduated and you're moving on in life. You're starting your own family. Remember those things and those core values. Most importantly, as you go forward, remember that in all that you do, choose God, follow him faithfully, know that you're gonna stumble, but it'll be okay. We have a loving God just like you have loving parents. And your church family loves you. We are all here for you. And with that, I thank you for listening to me and want to introduce to you the class of 2021. If our seniors will come forward. Ms. Pam, would you like to give them their... And the jitters aren't nerves. I had too much coffee and not enough food this morning. Yeah, yeah, so y'all want to come over, and there's a, a line right here, the power cable. You can sort of line up on that. would be great. Stand on the line. You yeah. haven't heard that for a while. And, and if you want to bring a, a gift in the prayer shawl, that would be good. Okay. Our first graduate that we're recognizing, Hayden Knott. Hayden is the son of Greg and Pam Knott. He's graduating from William G. Enloe High School and he'll be attending Wake Tech's Automotive Systems Technology Program in the fall. Hayden is known as our Mr. Fix-It. Can I tell you, when I took over the youth, I couldn't use the remote to the Blu-ray, the TV, or the VCR. Hayden was my go-to man. He was also a couple feet smaller than I was at that point. Hayden loves helping people fix stuff, fishing, video games, spending time with his family, friends, and his youth group. Congratulations, Hayden. Our next graduate is Taylor Mazio. Taylor's the daughter of Rocky and Caroline Mazio and Sheila and Jim Ellis. Taylor's graduating from Wake Early College of Health and Sciences in both her high school, with her both her high school diploma and an associate's degree in science from Wake Tech Community College. She'll be attending UNC at Chapel Hill majoring in nutrition with a minor in biology. I don't know when she finds the time to do it, but Taylor loves playing softball, basketball, and spending time with her friends. And I got to say this, Taylor has always been our little Betty and our go-to anytime we took her anywhere. She is the sweetest child. Congratulations, Taylor. Our next graduate could not be here in person with us this morning, but she is with us live, and that's Crawford Ramsey. 
Crawford's the daughter of Valerie and Joe Deloach and Les and Amy Ramsey. She's graduating from Corinth Holders High School and will be attending Lincoln Memorial University on a full basketball scholarship where she'll study business. Crawford's obsessed with movies and spending her free time off the court with her friends. Congratulations, Crawford. Our next graduate, Lemuel Vardy. Can I just say, if you haven't noticed, from where I'm standing, the colors of all these cap and gowns is just beautiful. <laughs> Lemuel's the son of Mark and Kim Vardy. He's graduating from the Center of Excellence in Nashville, Tennessee. He'll be taking classes from the junior college, studying osteopathic medicine while continuing to play junior hockey as he pursues his goal of playing collegiate hockey. Lemuel loves to fish, hunt, and spend time with his family and friends and his dog, Maverick. Congratulations, Lemuel. Now I gotta say that our, those are our four high schools. Our last is a college graduate. I first met this one when I first came in to help with the youth group. I wasn't even a leader. I was just sitting in there helping out. And I gotta tell you, you wanna talk about watching kids grow up and feeling old? I feel it today, right? <laughs> Terry Allen Swain the third, but we all know and love him as AJ. is the son of Allen and Amy Swain. He's grad graduated yesterday from NC State with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. While at State, AJ was on the club team for disc golf and served as president of the NC State Shag Club. And for those of you who don't know like I did, that's dancing. <laughs> AJ is a senior airman in the U.S. Air Force Reserves and an Eagle Scout. And he'll be marrying his beautiful fiance, Marissa, in June. Congratulations, AJ. So friends, uh, when uh, some of these maybe were born and baptized, many of you who perhaps were here uh, gave a pledge that you would be with them, that you would raise them in the faith, that you would uh, nurture them and get them to this point. Uh, well, newsflash, you're not done yet. And we'll continue to pray for you. We will continue to be there for you. We we'll continue to love you. Continue to be there. Uh, your soft place to be whenever and however you might need. We're going to pray over you. You received a gift. You also received a prayer shawl. These are not honors, accords, or anything, but they are a symbol of our love to you. These were knitted or crocheted by a few of our women here in uh, the community of faith. Uh, each stitch is prayed over. Uh, and so when you find yourself uh, in a moment of anxiety or stress or uh, AJ the night before your wedding and you're saying, I don't know about this, you grab that prayer shawl and say, God is with me. Jesus is a friend of mine uh, calling me into this. So we're going to pray over them. If you have any part in uh, these students' faith journey or their life at all, if you want to even stand up and, like, you can you can come close. We're just going to, like, keep our distance as best we can, uh, sort of in this area. Uh, so you, you can move on. If you have any sort of, go ahead and stand up and walk. It's okay. You can come ahead. Uh, if you don't feel like you want to come forward, you can stand up and raise your hand out. Um, for those of you joining us online, people everywhere are standing up and like coming forward. Uh, we're glad to do this. You know, uh, growing up is a beautiful way. is a beautiful way to grow up in a family of faith, and this is a testament of that. Like we all need to hold hands and sing kumbaya. <laughs> if you're married, you can hold hands. We're in the same pot, right? All right? Even as we anticipate the blessing of the Holy Spirit next week in Pentecost, we know that the Holy Spirit is descending upon us today. And uh, as we receive that, might you hold your hands out in acknowledgement of the power of Jesus Christ as we pray over these students. Holy and merciful God, it is good and right and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty. Through all of the hours of homework, through all of the tears, through all of the stress, through all of the joys, you have been a friend of these students through it all. 
whether they realized it or whether it was your moment of prevenient grace working in their lives beyond their acknowledgement, we give you thanks for that. And as we send them forward into their next phase in life, might you continue to be their friend, might you continue to be their soft place to land, might you continue to be the place where they turned as a friend who calls them forward into the great expense of life. Now the adventure doesn't begin until something goes wrong. Uh, God, we know that life is not an easy path, but it's full of twists and turns and bumps and bang-ups. But we know along the way, you're a friend of ours who calls us forward and into a beautiful life. Might you bless these students and send them forward. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I feel like, Lee, where'd Leanne go? Can we, can we sing the doxology? I think that would be a nice thing to sing over them. Can we do that? Acapella. Here. Here, Kimmy, Kimmy's got a, somebody. As we pray over you, let us pray this uh, doxology for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, church, it's been a joy to be with you today. As we go today, there's a little celebration over here under the tent. I hear there are cupcakes and party and fun to be had. The graduates, if you want to hang out and, and people can come by and talk to you, that'd be awesome. Congratulate you. As we go into the world today, remember, we are a friend of God who calls us to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine by the power at work in Him. Let us go into the world today to bless the world through Jesus Christ.